What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Sound Training, and today we're going to be breaking down five of some of the best route running tips that I can give you guys. These are more so more advanced tips that we've been talking that we've talked about before. I know I've made a video similar to this, but these are going to be more advanced tips that you guys can really use to improve your route running, just to improve your game overall. Let's get started. And again, guys, if you want to get better at running routes, you want me to take a look at your route running, break it down just like I do on this video. Check out that link in the description that says submit your film for a breakdown. If you become a member on my website, you get access to a film breakdown service. You get a private email address where you could send me your film and also you get access to our advanced coverage breakdowns along with premium drills advanced drills and a little bit more you get some of our workout plans as well let's get started in this video so now the main thing i want to talk about here on this first route is digs how he pushes vertical how he sells vertical right that's a simple one but how we're going to talk about his steps at the top of the route okay so you see how he comes up here full speed then just drops right now drops right on the diamond as some of you might say oh well he took too many steps at the top of the route right he took five steps right here he went one two three four five right now yes in a perfect world you would like to be able to get out in three and some guys can do get out in three right you've seen clips of jerry judy julio um Devontae adams and, and some of the elite route runners right and Diggs is an elite route i'm not trying to say he isn't but they're out in three steps at the top of the break but however the issue is with some guys in high school when they talk about getting out in three steps their problem is is that they slow down right before it. some guys in college as well they don't attack the depth of the route and drop on a dime because again it's not about cutting out steps it's about cutting out time spent right so let's say let, you see how he's here there's no indicator his pad level doesn't raise up he doesn't start to lean back he doesn't start to reach out with his legs and his steps don't get real choppy right before the break he's just nice easy in stride you see his stride length does not change and he's able to just cut right on a dime his hips are violent he's bringing his chin to his knee now let's say this is a situation where we're in man coverage and that db's running stride for stride with him that db's gonna shoot by him unless he absolutely times this thing perfectly right and that's a very hard thing to do and especially if this db's like let's say in zone coverage and he's starting to bail out of there off man and he's starting to bail out of there it's so hard to react when you don't give any indicator with your pad level when you drop down some guys get so caught up in taking three steps at the top of the brain being able to go one two three three and get out in three what they do is when they get to this point about two three of the break here what they'll do is they'll start to slow their stride down their arms will stop pumping they'll lean back or they'll bring their chin up in the air and then they drop down right and a db is gonna if he's running stride for stride with you he's gonna feel that then he'll be able to break so what you got out in three it does not matter if that db is able to make a break on it a db's in a back pillar and he's in zone coverage he sees you start to slow down he sees your hands stop he's gonna be sitting on this break and be able to drive on the ball i don't care that you got out in three steps i want you to sell vertical and be able to drop on a dime and be able to cut out time because if, if you could get out of this thing look you see how digs one two three four five if that's faster in and faster out than a guy who gets out in three because he slowed down you're gonna win this race back to the ball and all it's about is winning this race back to the ball so again cannot stress it enough you want to make sure that when you decide to snap down when you decide to push vertical and get out of the break what we got to do is we got to make sure that i'm not indicating with my speed my pad level whatever it is i'm dropping on a dime and i'm getting out of this thing as fast as possible and again yes i would like to get out in three steps but don't let the Step, sacrifice your speed and sacrifice that indicator. Let's watch this thing full speed. So run in here, fast, drop. One, two, three, four, five, accelerate out of this break. Okay, so now next tip we're gonna talk about is just having a plan off the line of scrimmage, right? Being able to know when to use certain releases rather than just using them just for the sake of using them, right? Now, understanding how this DB is aligned, understanding what he's trying to do with his alignment, and then using that to create, um, using that to just come up with a release or not really come up with, but use a release that you've had planned, right? So you see his receiver here, attacks, leverage to the inside, makes this move, and then bursts up field, makes a play on this route. So we're mainly just going to focus on the release. So, you see this DB, right? Man coverage, right? We understand that it's man. He's got a little bit more like soft press, more disciplined man coverage. Now in man, what is this DB going to try to do? He's not going to let you go just run across his face and run across the field. He's going to really try to force you to the outside because he doesn't want to give up the inside. So if we attack his leverage to the inside here and I angle my stem off the line to the inside, what's he going to do? He's going to try to shuffle with me and seal the inside because he doesn't want to give it up. So what did I just do? I just got him to move all the 
the way off this platform and now I got some room to work and run an out route, run a corner route if maybe I'm from the slot or run a fade, come back, whatever it is, right? Because simply I angled my stem to his inside shoulder or if he's lined up a little bit more inside leverage, you attack his midline, right? And then I give him a move, I freeze him, I get his hips to lock because he's trying to seal the inside and I know I just got to beat this arm, right? So now again, the second tip that I want to talk about is knowing when to use a release, right? Now let's say he's more so head up and maybe he's got like safety help. Maybe it's like a two-man look or something like that. We want to go straight at him. We want to go straight at this guy, cut, attack his midline, and give him the same thing. Take it inside or an outside release, right? And then if he's walked up a little bit more, right, let's say we're not off the ball. Let's say we're on the ball and he's walked up a little more. His weight seems to be on his toes. He's going to look like he's going to jam us. We notice that on film, this guy likes to jam us a lot because you're going to be watching film of your opponents, and that's how you structure all your releases. You don't just go out there and just pick one. You have five set ones that you're ready to go with after you've already studied your opponent and you know what he's going to do, and then we just roll, right? So you, you got to know the situation of when to use a certain release you can't just walk out there and just pick one of the hundred releases that there are you got about five in your head that you know that are going to work this week from studying the dbs on film okay let's rock let's get this move and then let's go and you know the situation right and some might work some might not work right but that's why you have multiple things in your arsenal let's watch this thing full speed again so attacks his leverage one two gives makes him freeze and then we burst up field all right, so the next tip we're going to talk about here is how to set up your routes and how to make them look similar, right? So this is going to be Van Jefferson here. So, again, we're going to talk about this little skip that he does, and then he pushes vertical, right? So what this is is you guys got to make sure that all your routes, no matter what it is, can look the same, right? So he's going to be running a comeback here. We want to make my comeback look like I'm running a vert, but we want to make a vert look like I'm running this little hesitation, then run to this vert, right? So they, it's so many different things that you could do, so many different variations. But you see how Jefferson's here, and he gives this little skip, and then he bursts up field, and he keeps that same speed, and he's fast out of there, and that gets that DB to turn his hips and go run. That's what we call setting up this route, right? Because maybe one time... Let's say he comes out here and he's got to run a fade, right? I got to go run a fade. So I come out full speed. I give a little hesitation to get that DB to stop his feet. Then I kick up in a second gear and then I go, right? And I beat him over the top. Now he comes off and he's thinking, okay, I come, I give him this hesitation. DB's thinking, okay, I've seen that before. I'm not going to get beat over the top. I'm in oh shit mode. He's got, he's got good speed. I got my head down and I just snap it right off and I get the separation and you see this DB has got a couple steps ahead of me, right? That's all I need, especially when you got a good quarterback giving you a good ball. All you need is a couple steps, maybe two, three yards. That's 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 enough separation at the next level. That's enough separation in high school if the quarterback puts a good ball on you and puts it in the right spot. So again, we want to make all my routes look the same. This could be the this could be a similar case to like let's say you're running here. And you give him a little, rather than a skip here and a little jump, you give him a stutter. You give him like a violent hip, hip drop or your hands on your feet move. You're, vi you're just violent with your hips. That's going to get the same thing. It's going to get him to stop his feet. Then I want to make sure I push vertical fast off of it. And then I drop it off or I snap it off, right? Or you could just simply change up your tempo. You come out fast and then you start kind of cruising here. You almost start in like, like a 30, like a 75%, almost like light run. You get him to stop his feet, expect a break. Then you kick up into second gear. It's, you could do so many different variables variations but we got to make sure that it all builds off of the one route which is either a fade or some, some other route but it's got to build off of a a main route that you run and that sets up other routes you got to be smart with your route running you got to make everything look the same let's watch it again one more time so he's coming off here hesitate burst up field snap it right off great route here by jefferson Okay, so now we're going to talk about how changing direction, you have to be violent with your hips. In this particular case, we're going to talk about a whip route. So let's watch at full speed. So you see Keenan Allen here selling like he's running a drag. He just snaps it right off and then gets back out on this thing. So now... I think, again, it comes to making all your routes look the same, right? But now we're going to talk about how to get out of those routes. Being able to run full speed and change direction on a dime is not an easy thing to do, right? And a lot of people like to say, oh, well, you're not supposed to run full speed, right? You're supposed to only go like 80, 85 percent. No, because that's not selling what you're trying to do. You're not going to run a drag across the field to 80 percent. You're not going to be cruising. You're going to be going across the field 100 percent. And, and trying to get this guy to turn and run with you in this situation, right? So you see how he's coming here? He's fast. He's fully committed his hips, and he just drops right now. 
and you see how violent his hips are. When you could drop your hips and the low man's going to win, this DB is going to be – that's why selling fate so important even if you're running a curl, comeback, post. If you got the speed into it and you get this DB to turn his hips and to overcommit on this thing and really feel your speed and keep his head down and run and then I drop my hips right now, that he, there's no way he can com- he can even compare to that, right? There's no way that he can prepare for that is what I should say because that's why DB is such a hard position. And you being able to drop your hips right now and be violent with your hips, that's what will get him to shoot by. So that's how we change direction when I'm running full speed. My hips got to be violent. If you want to be soft with your hips and let's say Alan doesn't snap down right here and drop, let's say he just tries to beat the drum or milk the cow as I like to call it, he's going to drift. And it's going to be slow, and this DB is going to react on it. Because DBs work the same thing as we do. They work on getting out of breaks fast. They work on eliminating steps. They work on being fast out of there and accelerating back to the ball. So that's what we got to make sure that we are precise at. And we know when to make the break, so we have the advantage. We should not lose in a situation like this. Let's watch it again one more time. So he's coming off here. Breaks to the inside fast. Drop those hips as violent as he can. Shoot himself back out. Accelerate out of the break. All right, so this next clip here, we're going to be looking at Henry Ruggs from the slot. We're going to mainly be talking about how on a double move, how to sell this thing, how to sell a double move. That's what we're going to be talking about. So he's coming off here. He's going to be running this sluggo, one, two, three, breaks to the inside, and make sure you're selling it with your eyes and your hips, and you've got to have some kind of acceleration out of there. So you see how he's coming, breaking into this slant here. So this is more like this is more like a post and go. This is more like a pogo route. Um but again, this applies for the same thing as like a sluggo. This applies for like a post corner. It applies for a corner post, out and up, whatever it is. But when we're on a double move, we got to make sure that I got speed into the first cut, right, which Ruggs obviously has. And you see how he commits his hips and he commits his shoulders. And it's very smooth and we're selling like we're just trying to get this thing right in front of the safety. If we're the case, if like if let's say we were at the bottom of the screen here and we were running like a sluggo, same thing. We're trying to get this ball right in front of the corner. We're trying to get the corner to drive on it. And I break and I'm explosive upfield. So you see, what does he do? He snaps his eyes, commits his shoulders, commits his hips for three steps, and you see what that does to the safety, right? Safety walks down. I'm very sudden with my feet. The only way, again, we were talking about being violent with your hips. The only way I get out of a double move is by being sudden with my feet. You're running a post corner. You take those three hard steps to the post. If you're kind of cruising and then you chop your steps right before it, ain't nobody believing you're getting this post. you got to be fast for three hard steps, one, two, three, and pop it off on that right leg, and that's what will get you back out of there. The only way you change direction and be sudden is if you don't round your cuts, you commit to your cuts, you keep your hips and shoulders to your cuts, and you just stick and get out of there. That's a great job here by Ruggs. Let's watch it again one more time. So he's coming off, breaks to the slant, one, two, three, breaks it off, keeps that head down and bursts and accelerates past that DB, doesn't look until he's got him by about two, three steps. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys have any questions, please leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. And again, if you guys want me to take a look at your film, get access to some of our workout plans, premium drills, advanced drills, check out that link in the description that says submit your film for a breakdown. I'll see you guys next time.